When it comes to the classic UFO cases of the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, the U.S. government is running out of excuses. As more and more documents become declassified, officials can no longer blame every major UFO sighting on comets, clouds, and weather balloons. Does this mean the government will finally begin telling us everything it knows about UFOs? Socorro, New Mexico is the kind of small town people are usually traveling through on their way to someplace else. Visitors rarely slow down long enough to learn that this place has a mysterious past and that one retired Socorro police officer is still haunted by the unearthly encounter that took place here 32 years ago. Lonnie Zamora remembers April 24th, 1964. He was a rookie on the force, returning to the station after an uneventful day. Then, a speeding vehicle passed Zamora's patrol car, and he set off in pursuit. When we got to this hill, uh, so a lot of dust, and uh, I let the speeder go, and I turned to investigate. I could see a white object uh, sitting between those two, uh, two bushes over there, and uh, I had to come real slow because this was a messed up road, had big rocks on it and everything. I thought it was the kids from high school there. They were racing up here, and maybe one of the teenagers had turned over. When the speeding object came to a stop, Zamora claims that he saw two figures in white coveralls emerge from a strange white UFO. He moved in slowly. I came up here on uh, this road till I could find a flat spot where I could uh, park my car. I got out of the car and glanced down to the arroyo there, and I saw this uh, white-looking object. It was uh, sort of a big egg chap, bigger than a car. Those are the exact bushes that were there, and the craft was sitting right in between them, too. So I started down to, to see what it was, and then uh, I heard this big boom in the bottom, and the fire came off the bottom. So I started running behind my police car to take cover. I could feel the heat off that because it's windy like now. And then it uh, gradually pulled up, up about 20, 30 feet, and stayed there for a while, and then just took off. His radio was dead. Zamora could only watch in awe as the object disappeared over the horizon. As soon as it was gone, the police radio crackled to light, and Zamora called for backup. A New Mexico State Police unit quickly arrived. We came down here, and we saw this uh, big rock right down here. It was still on fire. And then we saw the Im imprints of the, of the legs of the craft, and then it was four of them. And then we saw this uh, footprints around here. By nightfall, the FBI had arrived on scene and began gathering evidence. They uh, went down there and measured the, the, the footprints and everything. And uh, we stayed out here until about 7 or 8 o'clock at night, uh, still wondering what it was. But they didn't say what it was or not. But 9 o'clock, they said we went down to the courthouse and uh, we talked about it until about midnight. Instantly, Socorro was the center of an unprecedented media frenzy. This is one of the few sightings that got national attention immediately. Lonnie Zamora's story is on the national news. It's in all the newspapers. Everybody's talking about it. Kevin Randall is an internationally renowned UFO investigator. He feels the Socorro events stand alone because of the amount of physical evidence collected at the scene. Landing gear marks were found. The bush was burned by the UFO engine. There were occupants, creatures from the craft sighted by Lonnie Zamora. And the event brought the greatest UFO researcher of the day to Socorro. J. Allen Hynek, the Air Force consultant, came to Socorro. He looked at it, talked to Zamora, talked to Zamora's superiors, talked to people who saw the landing traces, took photographs. So there's physical evidence remaining behind. It's one of the few times they said there could be a flying saucer. I had conversations with Dr. Heineken about the Socorro case, and his comments to me led me to believe that he felt that this was one of those cases where the government was unwilling to permit him to say what he would like to say about it, and that this made him a great deal. According to Timmerman, a longtime associate of J. Allen Heineck, the Socorro event was one of the defining moments in Heineck's career. He felt that this was one of the most important cases he'd come across. And I think that maybe his attitude toward it was developed as a result of his feel about the Lonnie Zamora, the primary witness. Lonnie Zamora is very credible. He's a police officer. He has nothing to gain by telling this story. He is 
stuck with this story from the very beginning. This is what he saw. There's no question that Lonnie Zamora saw something unusual on the ground. According to, uh, to the Air Force and government, they, they say they, they, they don't know what it was, and they never told me the, the, not to say or, or say about it, you know, talk about it, but uh, they say that uh, they, they don't know what it was. In fact, it took 21 years for the Air Force to finally offer an explanation for the Socorro UFO landing. They offered logs from the White Sands Missile Base, charting government testing of the newly developed lunar landing module. But the logs indicate the tests ended more than five hours before Zamora's sighting. The Air Force explanation simply doesn't work because they have no documentation to place the lunar lander in that portion of New Mexico at that time. It does not match Zamora's description. I think if Dr. Hynek were here today and saw this new documentation available to report that the Air Force says it was a lunar lander, if anything, that landed near Socorro, I think he'd say bushwalk. He'd say that this is a, the government trying to do its fancy little dance and uh, saying things that will satisfy the media, who will satisfy the country and the world, that there's no reality to the UFO phenomenon, whereas there is. And according to JPL, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, the lunar lander alluded to in the government data did not fly it was dropped from a tower and had no system of independent propulsion as reported by Zamora. Randall believes that this is proof the Socorro UFO was not a lunar lander. The Air Force completed their UFO investigation, said they had nothing more to say on it, and yet now they're coming out this year providing us with new explanations for old sightings. I have no idea why they're doing it, but I find it highly significant. Randall believes it is Socorro's proximity to several highly sensitive military bases that have prompted a continuing disinformation campaign. It is between the Los Alamos National Laboratory, the White Sands Missile Range, the very large array, a radio telescope, is 50 or 60 miles to the west. Socorro's right in the middle of this. If you've got a race of intelligent beings wanting to see what we're doing, this makes a perfect place for them to come to observe our steps into space and what our science is doing. According to Timmerman, the Socorro event convinced Dr. Hynek that the truth about UFOs was being manipulated by the Air Force. After Socorro, Hynek left his post. The government lost one of its most prestigious spokespersons and gained its most ardent critic. Dr. Hynek saw this and it was very obvious to him that what Lonnie Zamora was saying in the depths of his honesty was not what the military was saying in their attempt to explain it. On a recent episode of Sightings, we brought you the first-hand account of Sheriff's Deputy Lonnie Zamora, who witnessed the egg-shaped craft. Those are the exact bushes that were there, and the craft was sitting right in the, between them, too. So I started down to, to see what it was, and then uh, I heard this big boom in the bottom, and the fire came out of the bottom, so I started running behind my police car to take cover. And then it uh, gradually pulled up, up about 20, 30 feet and stayed there for a while and then just took off. Almost instantly, Socorro was the center of intense media interest. But except for the few frames of footage seen here, all film and photographs taken by news agencies and curious onlookers was reportedly confiscated by the government. But Sightings was recently contacted by a Southern California woman whose family home movies had somehow eluded the authorities. Well, I was sitting home one night and um the program sightings came on and there was a story about Socorro, New Mexico. And I sat up, I went, oh my God, I cannot believe it. I, w I was there. I have home movies of this. In April 1964, the family was on vacation in New Mexico. This rare home movie, recorded at the scene of Zamora's sighting, shows the aftermath of the UFO landing and takeoff. As I recall, we stopped at a gas station and I remember we spoke to a sheriff and he told us that he had been in the desert and he saw a UFO landing. My father was really amazed about this and really uh, interested. So we followed the sheriff out to the location where this occurred. The scene of the UFO encounter was just as Lonnie Zamora has always described it. 
I got out of the car and I walked and you could see very clearly where it looked like a tripod had burned into the ground or something, a craft had landed. And you could see the landing marks very clearly on the ground, that there was a bush that was all charred and burned. Though short in duration, this film footage is significant because it not only validates Deputy Zamora's story, but also provides important documentation for ufologists who continue to study the Socorro case. We were kind of quiet when we got back in the car, and I said, wow, Dad, that was amazing. It affected both of us. It was a remarkable thing to see, and we both believed what the sheriff told us. There was no question about it. Disproving the lunar lander theory does not mean that the Socorro craft came from another planet, but it does raise serious questions about the true nature of the event. What could have landed there more than 30 years ago that is still too sensitive to reveal?